Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. You may remember a few weeks ago I did a review of a piece of software called PhotoLemur. PhotoLemur is a one-step solution to photo processing. You simply drag an image into PhotoLemur and it does all the processing for you. Well, during that video and review, I mentioned a few shortcomings I felt PhotoLemur had, but I also mentioned that PhotoLemur was going to be coming out with an update in mid to late June, and when that update was released, I would do an update video. Well, that's what we're doing now, this update video, because version 2.3 of PhotoLemur has been released. But before I continue, just let me say that I am an affiliate for PhotoLemur. I'd like you to go to the description below this video. There you will find a link to my code of ethics statement. I'd like you to click on that, read my code of ethics statement so you understand what I gain by being an affiliate of PhotoLemur. Now, one thing I have to clear up. In the last video, I misstated the minimum maximum file size. First of all, as far as I know, there's no maximum file size. You could draw in or drag in a RAW file, a JPEG, a TIFF, or a PNG, but the minimum file size is 800 by 600 pixels. For some reason, I misstated that and said the largest file size. So it has to be at least 800 by 600 pixels. And to prove, I'm going to take this very large RAW file from a Nikon D850 and drag it into here and let PhotoLemur do its thing. And you can see it does this little routine where it processes the image. And I did mention in the last video that I think PhotoLemur is kind of limited to people that need to get some things processed quickly, mainly maybe a wedding photographers that need to get proofs to the bride and groom very quickly or a portrait photographer or something like that. And I received a lot of emails, surprisingly so, that there are a lot of professionals that use PhotoLemur for that very reason, to get the proofs out very quickly. One application I didn't think of, and someone posted a comment on that last video, is they're a stock photographer. They take images for stock, and they use PhotoLemur. It processes the images very quickly, and they could get their images done and up to the stock photo sites super fast without worrying about processing each one individually. And typically, often, a stock website will reject an image if it's overprocessed. And what you'll find is PhotoLemur rarely overprocesses an image. And if they do, there is a simple solution, which I'll talk about in a minute. Now you can see here is our original WAF file. We have this little slider. If I move it all to the way to the right, that's our original unprocessed RAW file. And as I move it to left, there is our process file. So you can see PhotoLemur did a very nice job of processing the image. And you can see it's not really overprocessed at all. If for some reason PhotoLemur did overprocess your image, at least to your liking, you could click on this little paintbrush over here. And when you click on that, you have a single slider. And it's simply, when it's all the way to the right, you're getting full processing. When it's all the way to the left, you're getting no processing. So it's kind of like a fader. You could just kind of fade out the processing a little bit, and that's very easy to accomplish. One other thing I want to mention is up here in the settings menu, there's really only two settings. We have auto lens correction. You may have noticed when I was moving this before, after bar back and forth, you could see the lens corrections as I slide it back and forth. If for some reason you don't want PhotoLemur to do any lens corrections, just uncheck that box. If I did uncheck that box right now, it's going to reprocess the image, so I don't want to take time to do that. But just be aware that when you check or uncheck that box, PhotoLemur is going to reprocess the image. The other setting you have is to disable sounds or enable sounds. So if you don't like that little noise it made at the end, you could disable that. Now, the main issue I had with the last version of PhotoLemur was the export function. I felt it was very limited. Mainly, you couldn't resize the image. Pleased to say, with this new update, you are allowed and you have the capability of resizing the image and a little more. So if we click on export over here in the lower right-hand corner, we have the three um, social media sites that we had last time, Twitter, Facebook, and Flickr. We also could save it or send it through email. You also could send it to a plugin if you own the plugin. It's made by Skylum Software. It's called Snap Heal that allows you to remove unwanted objects from an image. Now, I'm going to save it to disk like I did last time. 
and you come up with this dialog box. This dialog box will be dependent on the operating system you use. Since I'm using a Mac, this is kind of Mac look to it. Of course, if you're using a Windows computer, you'll have this Windows export dialog box. And you could save it as a JPEG, PNG, TIFF, JPEG 2000, Photoshop file, or PDF. And again, that is dependent on your operating system. But my problem was you couldn't resize it. Well, now they have this button here, Advanced Settings. Click on that, and a new dialog box pops up. And we could do quite a bit now. We could say where we want it saved, which we could before. But let's say I want to save it to my desktop. So I'll, I'll, I'll say there. Now we could do some naming um, to it. We could rename it before, but this kind of automates it. Um, meaning, I could put a prefix. So let's say I want to put a timestamp. So I'm going to put the day, month, and year. So it's going to begin with that. Then I'm going to give it a base, and I could change it to the actual file name, custom text, counter, or timestamp. I'm going to use custom te text. And this is Sculpture Park, so I'm going to call this, that's where this was shot. So I'm going to call it Sculpture Park. So it has, as you can see down here where it says the example, it has the date, then Sculpture Park. Then we could have a suffix. And I'm going to give it a counter, and we're going to start with one. So it's going to be the date, the name, Sculpture Park, and a counter of one. And you could put letters there if you want as well, and I'm not going to. So that is the name I want to give it. Now, do I want to save it again, the same settings as before, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, JPEG 2000, Photoshop, or PDF? I'm going to save it as a JPEG. Quality. Usually, for my website, I save things around between 75 and 80. That gives me a smaller file that loads on people's... Um, you know, computers very quickly when they go to my website. If I was saving this for social media or anything like that or any other purpose, I would probably keep quality at 100. I almost never go below 75. That's personal. You could experiment with quality and see what works for you. Then we have color profiles. This is awesome. So you could either use sRGB, Adobe RGB, a Pro Photo RGB. Those are in order of size with sRGB being the smallest color space. That means the least amount of available colors. But sRGB will display properly on almost all monitors. If you use Pro Photo RGB, the largest color space, it may not be able, or some monitors may not be able to display colors that are in that color space. So your monitor is going to interpolate the colors. So it may not come out or look exactly like you think it's going to look on someone else's monitor. So the safe choice is sRGB, and that's what I'd use. Also, if you're going to print it, you'd want to make sure you use the color space that will work for the printer, ink, and paper that you're using. So I'm going to use sRGB, and I'm going to resize it. Now, you could resize it to what you like. You also have some presets up here, whether you want to save it to the web as a JPEG image or for email, and it will set these settings to what is appropriate for those. But I want to use um, a long edge, and I'm going to save it to... Flickr, or not Flickr, I'm sorry, to um, Instagram. So I'm going to go uh, long edge 1080. Now I did have a, a preset down here in the export or a choice down here in the export thing to save it to social media. Those are direct. It won't save it to your desktop. It's going to upload it directly, let's say, to Facebook or to Flickr. And you'll have to put in your credentials so that PhotoLemur could log in for you and post that image for you. This case here, I'm saving it to my desktop, and I will myself load it up into Instagram. And if you, I get this question a lot, why am I using 1080? If you Google, let's say, uh, optimum file size for Instagram, you will get the, um, what they think you should export it as. And in this case for Instagram, it's 1080. On the case of Flickr, it would be 2048. So once you determine what size you want the long edge to be, you also could do the short edge or specific dimensions or send it as the original file size. You could either now save this as a preset by clicking Save Settings, and then you could give it a name, and I could call this Instagram. So that's my Instagram preset. Now I could come in here, and instead of changing these Every single time, I could just click my user preset and then click continue, and it will export a masterpiece in this case. So you could see that it's going through the process, and when it's done, it will save the image over here. Now, I did 
forget there was a checkbox you may have noticed at the top to overwrite the original. That is if you're using the same exact file name as the original file, if you have that checkbox checked, it will overwrite it. And I forgot to say that. So here's our image and there it is, processed and exported. So it does a really nice job. Now I'm going to click X and I'm going to say start over and I want to just drag in a wildlife image because I did get emails from two different people that asked me how it does with wildlife images and it does really I think a nice job and I would encourage you they do offer a free trial download the free trial and try it for yourself and see how it works with your images because uh, everyone's different you may not like the way I process a wildlife image and you know whatever so give it a try so there you can see there is our processed image there's our before that's a raw file this was shot with an icon d800e and there's our processed image. You can see it did a very nice job. And again, I could export it. And I just want to show you real quick. I'll go to the disk. And you could see when I hit advanced settings, finally, see this overwrite without warning. That's if it has the same exact name, all right, that it will come up with that. So I just wanted to make that clear. So you can see there's our raw file. There's our processed image. Did a very nice job. Now I want to show one more because they... Uh, improved their JPEG processing with this version. So I have this JPEG image. It was shot from the top of the Empire State Building quite by accident. Somehow my camera accidentally got switched to JPEG and I have this JPEG image. So there is before. That's just a JPEG out of a Fujifilm X-T1 and there's our processed JPEG. So you can see it opened up the shadows a lot and brought out more definition and clarity and sharpness in the entire image. So I think it did a pretty good job. And you can see it it did it fairly quickly. So it's a lot faster, I found, than the previous version. And it seems to do a pretty good job no matter what, no matter what time it, type of image I drag in there. And I think it's going to be, again, a niche uh, product for certain photographers that need to get images processed very quickly, either to get to their client or to share on social media. Again, in the description below this video, please read my code of ethics statement. I also have links for you to try it out. And if you use a code of mine, you would save when you purchase it. So there are discount codes available. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.